And let's transition over to fixed axis rotation. This is just to kind of show, I'll give you the notes and things that describe all this kind of motion, but we're talking about for fixed axis rotation, this just shows the velocity. But the key thing I want you to notice is that here's my fixed axis point here at point O. It doesn't matter where I move point A on this body, that the velocity 100% of the time is going to be perpendicular to R. Okay, that's just a fundamental relationship that holds for all fixed axis rotation as long as this r vector is parked right here starting at your fixed axis going away from that point. And that the direction and the magnitude of r is going to be based upon our angular velocity. So um, given the direction of this linear velocity, is the angular velocity positive or negative for this body as shown? It's a very positive or negative angular velocity for that linear velocity. Which direction does the body have to be rotating in? Right? It has to be rotating counterclockwise. Right? What's counterclockwise from the right-hand rule? Positive. And that's reflected in that number there. The positive 1.5 radians per second is saying that the omega of this body has a positive angular velocity. Now, one great thing about angular velocity, every single angular velocity you'll use the whole rest of this class, they'll all be in radians per second. Doesn't matter if you're in SI units, if you're in US customer units, radians per second is going to be the term we'll use. And what you'll see here is if the magnitude increases, the omega increases, the linear velocity increases as well. If the body has no angular velocity, has no linear velocities, it wouldn't matter where I moved this point, there's not going to be any linear velocity showing up. And if we go to a negative angular velocity, right, which is a clockwise direction, once again, the linear velocity um, will be perpendicular no matter where I move my point. Okay, so I hope that gives you a little bit of visual of, at least for velocities, this relationship um, between angular and linear velocity. Okay, so putting that into equations. So we'll go with a kind of a similar shape here. It's kind of a rectangular rigid body. Let's say that our fixed axis point is here at this corner, we'll call that point O. And so if we want to find, say, the linear velocity up here of point A, and we know that our angular velocity will be negative from the right-hand rule, right? Wrapping my fingers around, the arrowhead goes in the direction of my fingertips. That means that we'll get a linear velocity here which is perpendicular to our r vector. Using our relative notation, this is a relative to o. Okay, so the, the relationship that I just wrote is based upon a cross product. Okay, that cross product tells us that the linear velocity v is equal to the angular velocity omega crossed with our r vector, this r vector connecting the fixed axis point up to our point of interest. See if you can work through the cross product with whichever right-hand rule technique you like using, whether it's you're sliding your fingers along the first term and crossing them and you know, curling them into the second, whether you use a three-finger right-hand rule. Make sure you can validate that direction of VA given this cross product equation. I can tell you're not doing it if you're not moving your hands. Right? This is a really easy one for me to visually see if you're, if you're engaged. Validate the direction of VA. <laughs> All right, so the two different ways you can do this cross product. First of all, you need to know the direction of omega. Okay, without the, without the direction of omega, you can't take the cross product of it in R, right? So your direction of omega is into the board. You get that from wrapping your fingers around the omega, your fingernails or the arrow tips, right? You can think about sharpening your fingernails into like little, little arrow tips. And remember that the direction of that vector comes from your thumb. It's your thumb becomes the axis around which this body is rotating with its direction determined from the right-hand rule, right? If you did the same thing with your left hand, which you shouldn't, your thumb would come out of the board, right? So it's in the opposite direction. But we're going to use the right hand wrapping around, thumb goes into the board, okay? So that's our direction of our omega. So um, if we do the cross product, we slide our fingers along the first term, 
and then we have to curl them into the second term, right? R is going upwards. My fingers have to curl up this direction. Then my thumb goes to the right. Okay, so that's using like the slide your hand along the first one and curl your fingers into the second vector. The other way would be the, with the three fingers here. And so thumb would be omega, R vector going upwards, middle finger going over to the right. Okay, so that would be the three finger cross break. Thumb into first finger is middle finger. I know some people also like using what, first finger into middle finger, you can do that one. It would be this one, first into middle is thumb. Pick whatever one works for you, but just find a right hand rule that's consistent and that you can do correctly each time. Okay, so it doesn't matter of those three different options, which one you choose, and there may be others, but find one that's consistent. Yeah. Why is the omega not to the right? Got it, great. So the vector representation of omega is the axes around which omega rotates. Okay, so it's not going to be in the plane of the board at all. It's going to be something in and out of the board because this body is rotating around that axis. The direction of that axis, whether it's in or out, comes from if you wrap your fingers around the curved vector, it's the direction your thumb is pointing, your right thumb. Great question. All right, so that is for the velocity. The acceleration, let's go ahead and put our acceleration going in the opposite direction. Okay, so here's our angular acceleration alpha. Just a reminder here, if you don't have these memorized yet, omega is defined as the angular velocity. It is equal to d theta dt. It's the time rate of change of the angular position. I will try to always remember to use um, brown for angular velocities and linear velocities, purple for angular accelerations and linear accelerations, just to kind of give a visual difference between those. So angular acceleration, we use the same right hand rule for angular acceleration signs as we do for um, angular velocity angular acceleration is equal to d omega dt, the time rate of change of the angular velocity. And so we find that our tangential acceleration a sub t is equal to alpha cross r. So this is the same r we use for the velocity. Now you can look at this system and you should be able to see fundamentally that if your alpha is wrapping around in, in a counterclockwise direction, your a sub t has to be going in the same direction, agreeing with that angular acceleration. Right? If you had point A accelerating to the right and your alpha as positive from the right hand rule, that rigid body would no longer be rigid. Right? It'd, get, it'd get torn apart because these two points in the body are basically trying to accelerate in opposite directions. It, would be, it just couldn't happen. Okay, so go ahead and practice your right hand rule using now the alpha crossed into R. Notice I, I forgot my vector notation here above A sub T. Any cross product gives you a vector. Okay, so alpha is coming out of the board, right, using the right hand rule. R is going upwards, right, curl your fingers in that second vector, so my thumb would come to the right. Three fingers here, if I go R, or excuse me, alpha into R, alpha comes out, R goes up a sub t to the left. So same fundamental relationship, an angular vector cross into a position vector. Our third and final is the most fun one of all, omega cross omega cross r. Our normal acceleration is based upon a double cross product. Now, notice, what is omega cross r? V, excellent. So see if you can determine if there's a consistent direction for a consistent direction associated with r of that omega cross omega cross r. I would do the velocity term first and then cross omega with that one. You should end up with a vector that is in the plane of the board in the negative R.
and the plane of the board and a negative r. Which that makes sense, right? It's the normal acceleration. What direction does the normal acceleration go in? Towards the center of curvature, right? The center of curvature is the origin. So therefore, this will be my a sub n. Another way we can write a much more convenient way to write a normal acceleration, instead of a double cross product, it turns out it will not be a, there will be not a, not a single cross product in the equation. It's the omega magnitude squared in the negative r vector direction. Okay, so those two, the omega cross omega cross r and omega squared in the negative r vector direction are exactly equivalent. Okay, so um, I choose this one. I don't know about you guys, but that's just a much easier, no cross products, simply multiplying omega squared times, basically flip your signs on R um, times the components there on R. So just to reinforce here that these are all the vector, these are the vector equations. and that we can write scalar equations. So say you're just looking for the magnitude of these values versus the direction, you can use this scalar values. Now the scalar values come into play if you were using x, y coordinates and you needed to find a, t, a, n, and v, a, you don't really need to take the cross product. We could easily observe that v sub a is gonna be in the x, a sub t is gonna be in the negative x, and a sub n is going to be in the negative y, right? You don't need a cross product to tell you that. You can just look at it and understand how things move. So if that's the case, you can just use the scalar equations to say, well, I know that um, v is equal to omega times r, right? That's the magnitude of v. I know that a sub t is going to equal alpha times r, right? The magnitude of a sub t and I know that my a sub n is going to equal omega squared times r, right? That's the magnitude of a sub n. So if you're just looking for the magnitudes, um, you don't really need the cross products. And I'll say that the more of these problems that I do in this chapter, I take cross products as little as possible. They take a whole bunch of extra mental effort to get through all the cross product components where if I can draw the vectors, use the geometry of my problem to figure out what direction they're going in, compute the scalar value, I can just, I'm off to the races, as opposed to kind of wading through I hat cross with negative K hat, like what was that again, right? It's a lot more effort to go through this. All right, questions on these relationships, right? Realize that all of these equations are relating linear to angular velocities and linear to angular accelerations, right? So it's kind of translating between linear and angular.